Welcome to the Usual Rejects Podcast. I'm Kirk Kowski. I am here with Evan Anderson. Hey, folks. And my name is Greg Russ, as far as I remember. Do you ever feel like that your name doesn't actually fit you? Uh, even though you've lived with it your whole life and you sit at some point and you think, oh, yeah, that's my name. That's weird. I it is a weird that. thing that someone has given you a name that has so much effect on every day and every second of your life. And if they choose wrong, uh, it can ruin everything. And I actually, uh, I often say that people that have been given the wrong name uh, are really disturbed or like, you go like, oh yeah, their name is, that's them. They were given the right name. It's their name's fault. Yeah. If you have a good middle name, you're a serial killer, right? I. Oh one- shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, the one thing they've always brought up, serial killers always have, they always go by their three names. I like to think that's a service that you know, the news is doing because someone else out there probably has the same first and last name. So you throw in the middle name too, to separate that person. Okay. So who, <laughs> who out of the three of us has the best serial killer name or the best assassinator name? Is that what it is? Assassin. That's it. Assassin, not assassinator. Although that would be pretty cool if it was an assassinator. <laughs> I, I would venture to say I have the best serial killer name, but let's, oh, okay. Uh, let's hear it. Well, let's start with yours, Devin. What's your full oh, name? Okay. All right. All right. Mine is Devin Christopher Anderson. Well, that's actually pretty good. Pretty Christopher. good, right? That's pretty yeah. good. The Let's Chris- test it out. Devin Christopher Anderson was on top of a warehouse with a high-powered rifle on Tuesday before Christmas Eve. Pretty Sounds good. pretty Next good. Up, Kirk's isn't good because of his last name. I just yeah, my last name. You it know. throws it. But what yeah. is it? It's William, so it's Kirk William Guskowski. So let's 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 test it out. So. Kirk William Guskowski was recently arrested in the back of a warehouse of a book depository in the corner of Fifth and Main. He is under arrest. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, it's I feel, it, I feel, it, it, it rings. I like, yeah, I feel like it's okay, except that, you know, the reporters would screw up the pronunciation of the last name constantly. Yeah. Kirk. Yeah, I actually thought about using my middle name as my stage name. Your stage name? For a while. And do Kirk Williams. Kirk Williams, Gus, 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 Cal, what, what is this? Wait, so is it plural? So Kirk Williams? Gustavus? No, no, I'm saying that if I <laughs> change my name, yeah. okay. I couldn't be Kirk William. That would be a weird fucking choice of a name if you're going to choose your own name. Um, um, and Greg, let's hear it. Gregory Jason Russ. I think Gregory that's it. Gregory Jason Russ. Ooh, okay, so. Test it out, test it out. Okay, so let's see. Uh, poli- police and local FBI have... Gregory Jason Russ under arrest at the border of <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> I, 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 I think it still works maybe the best, but that Christopher, that Christopher really was an added oomph. Well, it's today. just, it, I, I mean, Devin Christopher Anderson is about as white suburban as it comes. So that's, I think that's why, I mean, like when you, when you meet me and you look at me, you're like, wow, that's pretty white suburban. And then you hear that my name's Devin Christopher Anderson. It's like, yeah, he could probably kill a few people. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine that name, you know, like it would be like in, a bomb. In big, in big or bold something. letters on a, on a shitty newspaper. Devin yeah. Christopher Anderson arrested at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> <laughs> Most suburban bookstore there is. It's very fitting. There you go. Which, <laughs> speaking of which, you know, we can get into the show and the holiday theme of this episode. Uh, Devin, right now you are in the suburbs, correct? Visiting family? Yeah, so for the holidays... I have traveled traveled amidst all of this, and I'm currently in uh, Grayson, Georgia, uh, which is a suburb outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And, Are you going to uh, vote there? Yeah, right. <laughs> I got to tell you, like jumping ship from New York and spending time in Georgia, the the media down here, like commercials, they they have such vicious propaganda for like. Democrats versus Republicans. So the commercials are just nonstop attacks on each candidate. It's that's all the commercials are down here. That's it. I'm yeah, Greg, last year. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, last year I was in Virginia during um, maybe it was maybe it was the year before that it was the it was when there was like a big uh, Senate change, um, and the the propaganda politically on on TV was every single commercial break was nonstop like. If Democrats get elected, they will eat your children and wipe the walls with their blood. It is. I mean, it's hardcore. Um, Devin, well, I grew up in the Atlanta area. Yeah. So, um, 
I'm familiar with the races that are going on there more than maybe. I know that there's a lot of national attention right now uh, just because it's going to determine who controls the Senate. But um, I'm familiar a little bit more with those races. And because I'm on uh, a radio station down there, I joined my friend's radio show uh, on WSB, which is 95.5, if you ever uh, are in the area and would like to listen. 95.5. Tuesdays and Fridays, I have segments usually at 10 a.m. Uh, on this, Ooh. Show. but it's a it's a talk station, and I hear the advertisements when I join, and yeah, they are they just there's they uh, hard. They use the they use the phrase when when they de- want to describe someone that they don't like. Uh, they use the phrase left, radical, and socialist a lot down Constantly. here. It is used a lot, and I'm actually. I'm not really looking forward to it, but I am spending time with family uh, in a mask uh, on Christmas Day here, and I am afraid that I am going to be cornered and kind of, I, I, I'm very afraid that people are going to be like, you you leftist, socialist, radical, son of a, you know, like, I, because I'm in Yankee. Trump country, man. I mean, but you don't get involved in that. General, no, you I don't, don't ever I mean, take I, the bait. No, there was I'm, a I'm, there was a brief moment where Devin thought about getting involved and, and sent an email to everybody, and then uh, never heard for about it again. <laughs> well, even on this show, like Devin has introduced this topic, which is very rare for him because if we do venture into politics, that's when Devin shuts down. There's silence. Bye. Yeah, I think there's a there I, there has been a couple of reviews that are like good show, except when they go into politics, and I feel like that's <laughs> whoever Devin's friend is who listens to the show is like told him like to to fuck off you know anytime that (laughs) we say something that he doesn't like um so he just shuts down now i I Uh, i've got a you tell your friend kirk he's a fucking scumbag he's a bernie sanders loving radical leftist socialist i i look i do think there's value in doing a show that can take people away from politics in general no matter what your views are (laughs) it's so tiring and it's taken such a toll on so many people that if we can just do a show that focuses on pop entertainment and, and that's and that's, that's kind of what we're that's yeah. what we're aiming for today we're yeah aiming for we're aiming for some holiday cheer some some holiday focused entertainment so i guess the i first... wish i had bought a christmas candle of some sort to well, light that would have been i gotta say greg since the last time we zoomed i noticed that you have flowers on the shelf i saw that you. too it oh, stood out to flowers, me flowers buddy they're actually dying, but I put, yeah, I noticed that too. I'm he not had gonna, time I'm to get gonna, flowers. I see. We're it. not going to judge you if you have dead flowers on a shelf. Well, I, I need to replace them, but yes, I I found that flowers really brighten my mood. I put the <laughs> shelf up uh, right behind me and put a few knickknacks on it and some flowers. I keep cycling through, though these have obviously started to die and I haven't gotten rid of them. Also, to my left, you can't see this. I guess if you're looking at the screen, maybe it looks like I'm pointing right. But uh, I put a Christmas tree on my first Christmas, 13 years in New York. And, you know, I'm staying put because of uh, COVID. Like my sister just tested positive today. So, oh, oh no. no. Okay. For my choice. I mean, she's doing okay. Uh, yeah, that's the thing with COVID, right? Most people are going to be okay, but it fucks with people. Uh, yeah, it does. When it does fuck with people, it's very bad and you can't risk that because you just don't know. But uh, the point is, like, yeah, I know a, a handful of other people that just died from it. So, yeah, and it's still nothing to mess around with. But, uh, yeah, you know, the good half Jew here tapped into the non half Jew side and got this Christmas tree. That what, uh, what size Christmas tree are you rocking? Did you have to? Foot. Whoa, six foot. That's why I don't know if you can see behind me. The side table is just in the middle of the room, kind of because that's where it usually sits by the couch, and I needed to make some. Space. So you so you moved it so that you could bring your six foot tree in and you haven't moved it back. Well, there's nowhere to put it right now, so that's where it lives. <laughs> I mean, it's blocking the bathroom, isn't it? What's your whole situation there? Yeah, from this from this angle, you tippy toe. Well, now from this angle, it looks like the refrigerator is flush with it, but there's space in front of that refrigerator oh. to get around and in. Uh, look, I'm happy with the choice. I I I did my homework. I went down to one of the guys who comes to town and sells the Christmas trees. I asked him how much they go for. He's at the Fraser Fur for six foot, it's $120. I said, Whoa. what? Okay. And so, look, they want you to haggle. This is the whole thing. But he started really high. That's a, that, so then that's there's fucking a fucking double. There's a local place that's always open. Uh, it's an outdoor space in between two buildings, like a block away from me. It's a gardening place. And to support a local business, I said, okay, I'm going to go there. And I went in. And they told me $80 for the same tree. 
which I think they were expecting me to also haggle. But because it was so much cheaper already from the other guy's tree and it was a local business, it's like, what, I'm going to save 20 bucks? That means more to them than me. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, okay, here's the $80. And yeah, I feel good about it. But good yeah, boy. Good boy. Bucks. What, uh, did you carry that back by yourself and drag it up the stairs? Yeah, they're not. They're surprisingly not heavy. You can you can do it. Getting in through the door was a, a little bit of a chore, but uh, you know I had some help. So that's and, nice. Uh, and you was, have did did you have to get ornaments or did you already have a box of ornaments? Here's the thing: I don't have ornaments this year. I just have lights on the tree. And if this <laughs> becomes a tradition, I will then start building up the ornament collection. I just. I don't, I didn't have it. Well, okay, okay. So then moving on to the next most important kind of question is what kind of lights? Uh, color lights. <laughs> I mean, that was, that's a big, I, that's a fair question. I even had the internal battles like white lights. Color. Yeah, it's yeah. a thing. It is legit a thing. It's like, what kind of lights am I going to put on my Christmas tree? What kind of lights am I going to decorate my, you know, my suburban home with? You know, like everybody, it, it's their, their choices, their signatures, my friend. What are your thoughts, both of you, on the on the lights? Look, white lights are classy. Yeah, but, we did have this friend. debate here as well. Um, we thought about the white lights, but we went with the color lights because oh. it just brightens up the room. It does. I think it's it's the nicest. I mean, this, we don't normally get a real tree, but uh, Christina this year was like, "I want a real tree for Christmas," and you know, <laughs> being stuck inside all the time, it really brightens up the place. It's nice, eight foot tree. Are we? Are we going? This is the glow. Well, the, you see the glow of the screen on my face, but the so like <laughs> behind me, you got that nice mixed glow because of the red trick. glow. It kind of looks like a dark room. Well, it's now, cute. now you definitely do look like you might be an assassinator. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want. It's nice. It was festive. I heard you say, Kirk, a real tree. Yeah, I got to go with the real tree. The fake tree is another debate people have. I just. You know the the real tree, the smell when you walk in, and true. There's this the smell is something, man. There's something about it. It's nice. Yeah, throughout my childhood, we had fake, and then every now and again we get a real. But mostly we had fake trees. But this is the first. I think this is definitely the biggest real tree I've ever had. You ever um, get a flocked tree? What is that? What is snow. that? They put the fake snow on it. Oh, I look up a flocked Christmas tree. It's a wow. Thing. And now you can okay. get tinsel. Is there tinsel? Uh, no, I don't have tinsel. You think you, popcorn? You know, some people put popcorn on their tree. Isn't that a strange fucking thing to do? That is a strange thing because it's just like uh, <laughs> cranberries and popcorn. Like, am I supposed to eat this when I'm done with it? What am I doing with this? Feeding the mice. Is do that do just to, to like to keep local... kids busy? Possibly. Yeah. I, I looked it up. It was you know from a time when uh, people were poor. Yeah, they didn't have other direct decorations. <laughs> um, ornaments, I was going to just add. put a spare rib on it. On Kirk, the... You have a collection of ornaments? I mean, not here, but like my family has amassed a collection. We have a couple of uh, specific themed ornaments, though. Um, I have an Oliver and Company ornament mm. that Christina got for me. She's got a beaker and the Muppets uh, that sings when you hit it that I got for her one Christmas. So there was a, there was an ornament that I almost got you, Chris, uh, Kirk. Well, I don't know. I don't know why I called you Chris, uh, Chris years Trump. ago. Um, it was a Kirk and Spock Christmas ornament where they're it's Star Trek to the wrath of Khan, where they're both on the opposite sides of the glass, like putting their <laughs> hands up against the glass. That's that awesome. was an ornament. And I almost got it for you. And ever since then, I feel like I've tried to find it, but I've never been able to find it. So I'm sure I could like look it up on eBay or something. Well, like that. I appreciate There's... that you thought of me in that moment. That's really nice. We, yeah. we, sh we share that moment ourselves. So that's, we have shared that, that would moment mean a several lot. times. Thank but you, yeah. I thought that would be great to commemorate that and be able to put that on a tree once a year. So you can be like, I once did that. Did you, um, do you ever stay in New York, Devin, for Christmas? Yeah, I did one year, but it was a year that I was working. Like I had to work on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, so that was, a, you know, it's. I feel like it's a rite of passage to, you know, just have a have a year where it's like I'm on my own or I'm working. I'm working this year. I was going to ask if you had ever had a Christmas tree. That's why. But if you've only been here once, because no, I, never... I have never had my own Christmas tree. For me, it's always been whoever I'm staying with or if I'm traveling. So yeah, it's. I've never had my own. It's always just who I'm staying with. 
Yeah, it makes me feel like an adult at 38 years old for the first time. I gotta say, yeah, not going to my parents and getting presents <laughs> still addressed to me from Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. I got just a t shirt <laughs> that's from Santa. Okay. I, you know, if they I love I, it, I, come on, it makes them feel happy. Did you to just do have that. a birthday, Greg? No, was no, it your birthday? No, my birthday is in February. Okay. Oh, okay. Closer to, you know, what four. do you want for your birthday? Uh, nothing. I don't celebrate birthdays really. I, I just, my birthday's nothing special. It really should be the Mother's Day of celebration. It's like, you did all this work. <laughs> I, I, what did I do? I was just brought into the world. And also, anyone who thinks it's a special day, it's different now because of COVID. But normal times, go into a restaurant and see how many people on that day in that one restaurant, that one sizzler that you decide, how many other people <laughs> are having happy birthday sung to them? It proves that it's like you know, there's only 365 days in the year, sometimes 366, and there are seven over 7 billion people. Do some rough math and see how many people have the same birthday as you. A lot. <laughs> it's down true. There. It's true. You are not special. I, and speaking, speaking of not being special. You don't deserve wait, a day. I'm not. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't deserve a day because I didn't do anything and I'm not special. And that's the problem. It's okay to not be special. Everyone has this need to feel special. It's fine. You're not special. You're just a person. You're alive. Well, I think Kirk, you're special you, to me, Greg. Kirk, you can empathize with this because your birthday is tomorrow. It is. Oh, is that what this was? This was a lead in. So This well, was a lead in happy to birthday, tie it Kirk. back. I, into I wasn't Christmas. asking for anything. And to tie in the fact that it's Kirk's birthday on Christmas Eve. Kirk is a Christmas Eve baby. Yes. Which sucked growing up, huh? Yeah. 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 It was, uh, I mean, look, I got presents and stuff because my my mom was all about it. She was like, if you're going to give him something, you give him two things. You give him one for birthday, one for Christmas. That's and she, nice. she always made sure that I was well taken care of. But as far as the actual celebration of my birthday, it never w- could happen with friends or yeah. anyone like and I, you know, I'm very lucky to have the parents I do that, you know, and, and my mother went out of her way to make sure that like, if we had kids birthday party and you know, like, you know, bowling alley roller and kind of shit that we did it um, earlier or, you know, not on the day. Um, but the majority of my life is just, you know, in the, the holiday conundrum of everybody's being crazy. So, um and and Christina threw a really nice birthday party for me. It was always like five years ago. I came up on my uh, memories <clears throat> that Devin was at, and uh, a bunch of people from the theater. That's right. It was like That's it was right. like Kirk's first adult birthday party, and like had a pinata and stuff. So that's right. Um, I remember that. Yeah, that was fun. But uh, yeah. you know, I normally get stuck in the like. It's a lot of stress surrounding and i've told devin this story several times i don't know if i've ever said it on here though um it was always about like the madness of like cleaning the house because guests are coming over and um so like i would and and i should have never really believed in santa because it was always like go to bed we're wrapping the presents now (laughs) (laughs) which which leads me to another question so i don't want to interrupt the story so no no when did you and how did you figure out if there's children listening let's get oh we're having this conversation i've said fuck like 17 times yeah. back, so <laughs> i just should have tuned out how you found out officially oh this hurts this hurts to talk about because i feel like i, I, tr- I <laughs> this is what our know, holiday episodes turn into. <laughs> this is our, our harley holiday episode where we're beating the, the the magic of this episode in its face right now with a big baseball bat but uh, oh god I want to believe that I still am able to hold the magic of Christmas in my hands, but you know, I, I suppose I was, I was, uh, I was at my first house on Carpenter street in I was 24 years old. It (laughs) wasn't that long ago and it was a dark day. No, I was at my first house on Carpenter street and we had this basement and I remember finding wrapped gifts and i'm pretty sure there was on the wrapped gift like they had already put the sticker that said from santa i feel like that's like but i i was this i was a little shit. i feel like i snooped i snooped a couple times but you know i i'm i made up for it because like i feel like after i found out that that the jig is up and that (laughs) santa was not real i figured after after that like i i i never snooped again like that was it it was like because I snooped that one time and it, it destroyed me. It was like, I never snooped again. 
did you continue to pretend at that point because you didn't want to let your parents down or did you just tell them that you figured it out? Well, I have a younger, I have a younger brother. So when I, when I found out, I know that I knew that it was about like trying to keep it as long as possible for him. So like laying it on thick being like, did you hear that Jordan? That's the sound of Santa on the roof. He's like, you don't have a fucking chimney, Devin. It's like, all right. <laughs> That's nice though. So you weren't so much of a little shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, Greg, let, what, when did you? Um, I feel like I was seven years old. I was watching. I've been, I know how I found out. I'm just trying to guess the age. Uh, mm. I was watching Family Feud. Question was, name a fictional character children believe in. Number one answer, Santa Claus. And oh! Family, was, I think Family, family Feud, Feud got a lot of hate mail that family year. Family Feud. Wait, wait. Which? Who was the host during this? Steve family Harvey. Feud. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no, this was early on. <laughs> Going back to the thing. No, Louis was, uh, Anderson. No, it was Ray Combs. Oh, wow. With, who committed suicide soon after. <laughs> that's why after he that episode. Now. It was yeah. after that episode. It was Ray Combs. Um, that's correct, right? He hosted it, I'm pretty sure. I'm getting so it. We're going to name the episode Holiday Special starring <laughs> Ray Combs who committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't laugh at somebody's. No, I know. Pain. What not. the fuck am I gonna? But I, so sorry. that's that's the way. And then I <laughs> pretended because I didn't want my parents to be disappointed, which is why I asked you, Devin. And then the way I would have found out a few years later, my dad, we were just I was helping him wash a car, and he casually said near Christmas, "You don't still believe in that Santa shit, do you?" I was like, okay, well that's that's the way it would have gone <laughs> if I hadn't figured out through Family Feud. So we should either name the episode "Family Feud Ruined My Christmas." Ruined my childhood, really, or yeah. ruined my Christmas, or you don't still believe in that Santa shit, do you? We should probably. I mean, honestly, I would love to put that on a T-shirt and wear it for you guys at all times. <laughs> we should. Start you still believe in that Santa shit, do you? Got to start a T-shirt line of merch. Let's get a yeah, yeah. We need to have a line of merch ASAP, and we need to have our episode titles on there ASAP, including this episode, which is "You Don't Still Believe in That Santa Shit, Do You?" <laughs> Such a great episode title. <laughs> I mean, can we name it that? Because it's going to be a whole thing. I have to put like asterisks. Yeah, we could do that. I think it would post that way. Um, all right, Perks, let's hear your story. And then, uh, then we can actually get to what we, what we wanted to talk about. It's weird. I only remember it so well. Um, I re it was my next door neighbor who's older than me. He was like, I don't know. He's like my best friend. He was like three or four years older than me. Um, and he told me, and then I went to my parents. I don't remember how old I was. I was young though still. And I asked why they lied to me. I like, <laughs> it was like, I thought we weren't supposed to lie. Yeah. Why would you lie to me? It's a big, and they both just like looked at me and they were like, how do we answer like, this? Like, <laughs> like their uh, eyes exploded out of their heads. Uh, like, yeah, it's a weird thing that people do to children. It really is when you really think about it. Yeah. But what a terrible child I was to put them in that position. Like, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to not lie to your children about that. You're going to tell them that there's fucking Santa yeah. Claus. Let's see. How, let's see how you get out of this one. Mon dad. Yeah. Teach me about the morals of lying and make me still believe in the magic of Christmas. Go. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you say? Well, it was because it made it fun. So it's like anytime a lie would make something fun. I'm allowed to do it. It's that's Just kind of how the conversation went. <laughs> it's a tough one. But also, you know, there's something very, very exciting about it. When you're a kid and you believe in that, and for, you know, it is magical. So, yeah. yeah. And speaking of magic, let's talk about all of the magical Christmas movies that we love to watch during the Christmas season. Uh, okay, so here we go. Speed round. What is one Christmas movie you always watch every year? Go. Kirk. Lethal Weapon. Okay. <laughs> it's so here's the thing. We want to get into this. Is Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie? I we know. do. This is I, this is what we're talking about. Let's get into it. I, so yeah, I'm curious to have that kind of conversation. Die Hard, obviously, the argument's been had uh to death, but I heard I've I've heard something recently. That makes me think about these things differently. Uh, Die Hard, without it being Christmas time, the movie doesn't work because it's set up 
with you know, the Christmas party happening. It yeah. Lethal weapon could happen without it being Christmas. It just so happens Christmas is going on during that time. So I don't yeah, know if yeah. weapon is a Christmas movie anymore. Hmm. Well, it also that, helps. that's the rule. There's a rule set for this. Well, so I, I needed to you can argue set rules. Argue it. This is but this changed my mind on it. It's like you know, it is really a part of the plot of Die Hard. Lethal weapon could happen without it being Christmas. I'm trying to think about the end of the movie because it is Christmas at the end of the movie when they're fighting on the front lawn in the rain in California. Um, I feel like it affects where people are in the movie because it's Christmas. So it's part of the plot, I think. Okay. But it's, it's easily, I mean, like, yeah, it's, but it's Shane Black. Like, so all of the, all those yeah. action movies are Christmas. That's true. But m- most importantly is you associate this movie with Christmas. So you watched this at a certain point in your life and obviously you loved it and you gravitated to it to the point where, you probably watch it multiple times a year, but definitely during the Christmas times. Yes? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there is a, like, it's weird. Like, I, I would watch one or two, usually, like, every show I did, too. Like, it just became a tradition. Um, but, yeah, like, Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, I usually watch every Christmas. Christmas Vacation. Okay, so wait, have you watched Lethal Weapon yet? No, I think I'm going to this- watch it either tomorrow or the next day. Or actually on the okay. day. This is your birthday, the, your birthday gift to yourself is to and watch I have, the weapon. I have bought Fat Man and I'm going to watch it Fat either Man. tomorrow or the next day. I'm Greg, very you should about check this. out Fat Man. Fat Man is very interesting. I think you still have to pay pretty heavily to see it. I think you still have to rent it for like it's six It's on bucks. sale for $10 right now. <laughs> so I bought it. No, I don't, I don't know anything about this. Fill me in a bit. Fat Man. Fat Man is a new movie that came out this year during quarantine and it stars Mel Gibson as good old Santa Claus. Mel Gibson is Santa Claus and the premise of the movie without giving anything away is a child who essentially got uh, put on the naughty list, put Santa on a hit list. So it's about an assassin going to take out Santa. That's the premise. All right, I'm looking it up. I'll watch it. Right? Ten bucks is fine. Ten bucks, ten bucks for seeing Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, which right there, that's the hook. Like, honestly, y- you don't need anything else other than watch Mel Gibson as fucking Santa Claus. It's less than a movie ticket here in New York if you go to the theater. That's so true. I'd be happy yeah. to pay ten bucks to watch this if it's uh if it's entertaining. Okay, so Greg, you're up. What's a movie that you what's a movie that you watch every year for Christmas? Love actually. Oh man, see this is what this is what this episode's about. Getting into it, you know, like just hands down laying your cards on the table. It, no, if you're sh- ashamed of it, good. Let's fucking dig in right now. Love it that you love actually. Hell, yes. What's your favorite what's your favorite story in Love Actually? I mean, it's a it's a tough one. I I watch it I watch it several times, <laughs> usually uh, a year, maybe twice around Christmas time. I try not to watch it outside of Christmas time because I want it to have that feel when I go back into it. And I just watch it again. The whole last sequence this time had me weeping, at least when you get to the part where uh, Hugh Grant as the prime minister is at the school. Uh, that whole thing I find <laughs> cute. But then, uh, yeah. then you know, the writer who goes to Portugal to find uh, – yeah, the woman who was his assistant, and that makes it such great comedy with it, like the the way that the dad is talking and speaking, and like it, the, you know, a game of telephone kind of happens through the yeah. translation, and it comes out like you know, at one point it's just said offhandedly that he's there to like kidnap her and make her, you know, his servant back in England. Um, but I don't know. I the storylines do change. I still can't really get behind the storylines where storyline where uh, Rick from walking dead goes after oh, yeah. his wife a bit <laughs> it's like all right you have yeah, the, for her, but you can't you know expressing those is a little a little much yeah but, but I, I i can appreciate the longing that sets in the unrequited love it's like all right i have these feelings and i can't really do anything about it uh yeah i just there's there's something about it obviously the uh storyline with um see i'm terrible with names even character names but the, it's okay the musician rock star guy Bill Nye. 
Yeah, when he goes back with his buddy and gives up the party at Elton John's and says he gives up the party with Elton John. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's it. That's a great storyline too. Ah, oh, they're all so good. I love it how they all converged. Well, at least a good majority of them converged. Um, the the Alan Rickman and the uh, what's uh, what's what's her name? The wife. Emma and Thompson. The, uh, yes, Emma Thompson and the affair and how they're building the lobster costume that we later find out is for the pageant at the end. And I, I love that scene in the car where Hugh Grant and the girl are in the back seat and the little girl wearing like the octopus costume for the nativity scene is sandwiched in between them. Like, oh, it's brilliant. It is. It is. And, and you know, I it just moves me. There's something sweet about it that just gets to me every time. Yeah. Um, hands down so i hands watch down. that every single year um sometimes it's on tv if i go to my parents since they still have cable i refuse to watch it on there though <laughs> yeah, it ruins it for me breaks it up too much it's edited no thanks get out of here um, you're, um, so, okay. you're a romantic at heart craig yeah oh, yeah he is I'm, look he's got wrong well, he's that. got dead flowers on his shelf i'm i'm a total secret romantic uh, yeah he is yeah i you know, so is Devin too that's true i think it's snowing and i can go walk around in the snow holding hands of someone i like that's great you're melting my heart (laughs) (laughs) i would love we're changing the episode title you're melting my heart you're melting my you're melting my heart i used to something i used to hide i was like ah it's too vulnerable i can't let people know but i've really embraced it over the the past few years and yeah good i'm a romantic and not in well, a traditional way, not in the gross. Here are some rose petals leading you to the bed, and then uh, get out of here. It's like, to me, romance, things like the snow is, is uh, you know, a, a generalized thing that most people can probably understand. Like going to the laundromat with someone uh, is romantic to me. The grocery store, doing normal, mundane, boring things, but enjoying your time with someone else, and whatever the dynamic is you create with that person, and having the romance fall into that. It's like this means something to us. Other people may may not understand of that's that's my wheelhouse Finding that's beautiful i and i mean that holy shit wow you're like you're you're melting me I, I, I like i'm not a very touchy-feely person but when things are finally back to normal like i'm gonna fucking hug you greg god damn it that's, oh that's, wow yeah for people who don't know this is big for devin if i got that's a big. hug from devin yeah i don't i would melt ice cream, <laughs> ice cream on the sun that's the way it is <laughs> I'm melting my heart it's like ice cream melts in the sun <laughs> okay, great. We're over this now. We're moving on. Okay, uh, next. Devin, your turn. Me, looks like it's um, crazy. Um, my my movie that I watch every year. Uh, uh, my movie that I watch every year is The Family Stone. Not a lot of people know about this movie, but people that have landed on it, I think, generally agree with me. Like, it's a pretty good Christmas movie. It's a it's a family movie. It's a family. I would probably put it in comedy although it definitely is rooted in some some real drama um and i love it because i think the characters are great and i think the acting is phenomenal you got diane keaton you got fucking coach as the dad you got uh, rachel mcadams as like the basket case sister you got um uh Sex in the City uh, as the, the Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker as the crazy girlfriend. I you think we should Hulk. change her name though. The Sex in the City. <laughs> Sex in the Everyone City. would know her better. You got Luke. Luke Wilson as one of the sons. Like it's just it's filled with so many great actors, and I love it as a just a story about a family, and it, they're all kooky, and it makes me like want to be with my family because it's like, oh, my family's kooky too. So I love the Family Stone. I'm with you on that. I, I watched that for the first time, I think, last year. And ah, that's a perfect segue because my next question was: What's a movie Christmas time that you have just seen? What's a Christmas movie you have just seen for the first time, or a recent Christmas movie discovery? Kirk. Um, I, well, that I've seen for the first time. I don't even know. if it was just a couple years yeah. ago. Where it's I mean, like- I just rewatched Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street um, recently because we were we did a production of it. We did a virtual. It's our first virtual presentation at the Chain Theater. Um, Devin got to watch the thirteen minutes of it. I think he liked it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you tuning in. Pulled away for work, but yes. 
No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I just thought it was funny that like I can see what everybody's doing. Yeah. <laughs> like I saw it. I loved it. I'm like, you watched 12 minutes of it. <laughs> um, but Devin didn't do that. He didn't see it. Like I'm just I'm just pointing it out. Um, like it was uh, it was really cool to revisit it that it um it holds up so well. Like this thing was made in the 40s and it's still like it dealt with psychiatry and like mental illness. And I mean, like this, I guess maybe reading into it a little bit more than you should but i don't think so like it dealt with psychiatry in a way that was like they accuse him of being insane that he thinks he's santa claus and he turns around and says no i actually have respect for psychiatry but you're hurting people with the way that you treat them um is like a theme of the movie and they're like well if he's crazy like what is he doing to hurt anybody um being too nice or like helping children uh so yeah, I got to revisit that. I don't know if there's anything that I've seen very recently for the that's first time. That's a good pick time. though. I mean, that's kind of half of what this conversation is, is like, cause there's, there's people that are walking around that still haven't seen the Godfather or star Wars movies, or like, you know, people that haven't seen it's a wonderful life or miracle on 34th street. And it's great that people finally are getting around to watching classics, you know, cause we're all holed up inside right now. It is a shame that none of the, uh, that many people, I shouldn't say not that many, but there are a number of people who just in general, not even classic Christmas movies. I feel like there's an aversion for whatever reason to go back and watch older films. Um, obviously, people who are into films and can appreciate will do it, but a lot of people, uh, something, even just something in black and white, I feel like is though still a turnoff for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great segue. Uh, this year, um, mine's twofold. I watched Truman Capote's A Christmas Memory. I watched Truman Capote's A Christmas Memory, which is a 45-minute or an hour-long YouTube movie. You can all watch it on YouTube. It's only an hour long, um, and it's got oh, – I'm going to – Greg, can you look up who the actress is in A Christmas Memory? There, There's two versions. It's the earlier version. It's black and white. Um, what is her name? But she she won an Emmy for her performance because it was and it was it's hands down amazing. Um, but I, as Greg was saying, like there's a lot of people that they see that it's black and white and they're just like, nope, this is not for me. And I was so glad that I watched it. And the reason why I watched it was because I found out that it's my mom's favorite Christmas movie. And when you watch it, you can kind of see why it's 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 very it's rooted in some very very great Christmas morals and some great heart uh, behind it and it's Truman Capote so it's well written um, but then to change it up uh, I also watched Christmas Chronicles with <laughs> with Kurt Russell as Santa Claus and that's on Netflix I still want to see that I highly recommend that for everybody the first one is very good the second one not so great but definitely see the first one so I'm trying to pull this off uh, pull this up um, so which character there's two it's like woman Geraldine Page. Geraldine Page. That's it. You got it. Geraldine Page is phenomenal. Like if you want, uh, if you want an acting class in like, like a a a, a woman that ages finely and shows a powerhouse performance, it, it was it was amazing. Like very good. Highly recommend. Greg. Um, I mean, we talked about the Family Stone already, but uh, I watched Krampus. Oh, I've been wanting to watch that. I've been wanting to watch that. Do it. Do it. Do like it? It's, yeah, it's an enjoyable film to watch. I, <laughs> honestly, I feel like, you know, there was a, a hesitation in my head because it was like, oh, it's $4 on Amazon. Like, but honestly, like, it's it's one of those things. I haven't seen this. You'll get I a guess kick I have to do it. That's the that's that's look. If you get a kick out of something, I think it's worth $4. You're not going to come away. It's like, wow, that's the greatest film ever. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a it's a horror comedy type film. Uh, I think that they set out to try to be a bit funny, which sometimes is annoying. It's maybe a little better when you try to make something serious and it just turns out it's like, all right, you really, you really missed the mark on this. And now it's Krampus. I, I fucking love it. That's but, great. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know what the Krampus is, it's uh, the creature that comes and abducts bad children around <laughs> Christmas. You've got the good boys and girls uh, who Santa Claus will reward with presents. And you've got the Krampus who comes and throws them in a sack 
and takes them away. And, you know, <laughs> a rough, a rough plot is there's a kid. He still believes in Santa. He writes a letter to Santa. His family makes fun of him for it. He gets a lot don't of ruin it. Don't ruin it. I'm going to spend the $4. dollars i want to watch this. Okay. I mean, that's, do all, it. that's all set up at the beginning. And then from there okay. you can, you know, you can, I can't wait. Yes. I can't Guys wait limit. to happened? spend my four dollars on this and and to text you, Greg, and being like, "You were so right, Krampus." I can't wait. It's now I be, gotta watch Krampus. Yeah, it's gonna be like my new icon on Instagram is just Krampus. That's gonna be my new thing. Um, go, go in ex- expecting exactly what you should expect. I, I honestly like. I I know exactly what I'm expecting to watch fucking Krampus and I'm all for it <laughs> like that'd be like me purposely going to watch cats which I still have not done but like I know what I'm going to get out of watching cats and I'm going to do the same approach with Krampus I just thought of cats and I know we've talked about it a lot on past episodes too much <laughs> I just thought about it again the other day and I was like oh yeah that existed it still exists <laughs> it does God. Anyway, um, well, they did put up a picture of Ian McKellen real quick, just a quick segue. They put up a picture of Ian McKellen getting a shot of the vaccine, and then the side shot of it was him as a cat and cats um, as the as what happens to you when you get the COVID vaccine. I thought that was pretty funny. Never got oh, that's great. That. Why did he join that cast? <laughs> Money. Money. Yeah. That's the Ian McKellen way. Um, okay, so real quick, before we wrap up our Christmas episode for The Usual Rejects, uh, what is... Do you guys have just like a, I mean, we kind of just dabbled a little bit on it. Do you have like a a holiday or a Christmas tradition that you do every year, whether it's you reach out to family, do you, you know, go for a walk on Christmas morning? Do you, you know, do you do something special with breakfast? Like what is a Christmas tradition that you have each year? Kirk, what do you do? I mean, obviously Christmas baby. But what do you do? Usually I go to the movies on Christmas Day. Budge, yeah. Oh, that's gone. That's gone. Um, So, or, and and usually like a good meal in the evening um, of my choice. So we'll probably do, we're going to do, we've gotten the ham already for that. We're going to cook a ham in the instant pot. Cooking a ham in the Poconos. I got a, a great recipe for that. We've been doing a lot of cooking together, as I've just discussed before. Um, and uh, we'll watch something. We'll watch something new. That's why I've been saving some of these like Christmas movies because. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Run through it. All the Christmas movies coming out on Christmas Day. Uh, you got Wonder Woman. You got yeah Pixar's Soul. You got um, One Night in Miami. Uh, there's so What's many. That? One Night in Miami. It's the it's a movie about like Muhammad Ali, Sam Cooke. Uh, there's a, a bunch of really famous people all kind of converging on one night, and it's, I think it's directed by uh, Regina King, the cool. actor from Watchmen. Wow, I want to see that. that I've, heard, good. I've heard very good things. Um, cool. But yes, there's a lot of good movies coming out on Christmas Day, so uh, Which is if you guys see something, let me know. Just in general, and uh, we can hit upon it a little bit, that, that deal that HBO Max has which there's an interesting in-depth article about how the whole launch has been botched. Like, because the dude, when at t merged with Time, or bought Time Warner, and he wanted to just compete with Netflix immediately. Um, HBO Max, launch it. Don't worry about clearing up the confusion with HBO Go and HBO Now and people don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's, I don't want to get too much into that here on this yeah. show. It is interesting that they have that deal with Warner Brothers where, films are going to be released simultaneously with their theater releases at least for the time being on hbo max next year so anything i can't coming out. i'm i'm so happy that i get to see dune i thought i was gonna have to wait like two years to see dune so yeah I'm happy well he's it, but... legendary entertainment is now trying to Ew. tie them up in litigation because <laughs> did you read what the art the article that the director wrote i'm been mispronouncing this guy's name this Villeneuve. whole time yeah is that it I, I, I heard somebody say, and it was like really out there of the pronunciation. I thought that that's how it was pronounced. The way Villeneuve. You said it. Villeneuve. Yeah. yeah um, but he came out and was like, I didn't agree to this. This affects my back end deal. I mean, when you think about it, like this has like, there, there's so many things that this affects that they paid off Gal Gadot and the director of Wonder Woman to praise this decision they like gave them 10 million dollars each to come forward and be like this is a great idea um meanwhile these directors that work you know these crazy hours and create these worlds like the guy from dune i mean i love that director love that director i'm so excited for that movie 
he is so angry and he's like not only were they going to do the the movies and he's like this will affect the sequel the sequel will probably never happen we'll never have the budget that we need to if it's just going streaming to create this monster monster of a movie and also they were supposed to make a tv show on hbo max to be the sister of that universe um so mm-hmm. i don't know Sorry to go on a tangent, but no, it's, no, no, no. it's a wor- worthy tangent. Um, That's Greg, I'd like to explore a bit more, like on one of our episodes after that. Yeah, to get into yeah. it. Yeah, we'll have to talk. It, um, Greg, you are up. What's a holiday tradition for you, sir? I mean, as Kirk said, I love going to the movies alone. Um, and it's not that I dislike my family, but I would always go to my family. <laughs> Even when I go visit my family, for the most part in Atlanta, I stay at a hotel. Um, in down in well part of atlanta not downtown but it's a part of atlanta uh the highland inn's there it's an older hotel that i enjoy i stay there it's near my friends but for christmas i do stay at my parents like the one time of the year i'll stay there and and spend the night and so it's a little opportunity to get away on christmas day for a little bit uh before you know the family comes over extended family having the meal um so you know i'm also in new york this year so the whole thing has changed but i like i like going to the movies and then dinner with my family and then usually that's when that night i'll find one or two friends who i just really don't keep in contact with anymore just a little bit and they're usually in town also and go meet up with them and you know hang out for a few hours so nice it's a nice time to catch up with people that i actually care about and wish i had more contact with but but on christmas you try you try to go to the movie alone yeah i enjoy going alone and sitting there and I feel like when I go to the movies with my family on Christmas Day, I always try to find the person that's alone in the theater and I always make mental note. Like I almost want to like go up to them and be like, God bless you. <laughs> or you feel bad for them. Or you or that would feel bad because it's Christmas and nobody should be alone on Christmas. Well, I think it's a when it's a choice. Did you hear the song? Haven't you heard the lyrics to that one song? <laughs> nobody better be all alone on Christmas. <laughs> I yeah. Have. I have. Um um, okay, real quick, uh, before we r- wrap up my holiday tradition, uh, m- many years ago, after I graduated college, I had a dream that I called up my college buddy on Christmas morning. Like I had a dream. This is like a very vivid dream where I called up my good friend, Eric Bulikowski that I went to college with. And I told him about that dream. And ever since that day, we have called each other on Christmas day. So because I dreamed it, we manifested it. So uh, to, on, on Christmas Day, I will be calling Eric Bulikowski, who's actually a, a, an avid listener of The Usual Reject. So hello to Eric right now. Hopefully you're listening to this. And uh, hopefully we had a fantastic conversation, our yearly conversation. So that, that's my tradition. Another um, wonderful Polish boy. <laughs> <laughs> another wonderful um, Polish boy. That's a great episode title right there. Too. <laughs> uh, another wonderful Polish boy. That would be a great well, just, shirt. So we, we learned a lot this episode. Um, this went nowhere near the way I thought it was going to go. Actually, I thought we were going to be talking about like Home Alone or like Die Hard or like, I don't know, LA Confidential or the other oh, off the beaten does. path yeah. uh, Christmas movies. But uh, really, it was like a heartwarming tale of Christmas films that uh, warmed all of our hearts and shows that we're not all Grinches. We're just we're just guys looking for uh, some love on this special holiday. We're just all assassinators. Yeah, we did start off the episode that way, though, so it's a nice balance, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you can't be open and vulnerable during Christmas, what the hell's the point? The truth comes I know. out. I love, love, actually. Well, yeah, we I'm so happy to hear about each other. That. We should start calling each other by our favorite Christmas movie names. So we should, we'll always call Greg Love, actually. And we'll always call Kirk Lethal Weapon. And you can always call me Family Stone. <laughs> FS. Family Stone. What's up, FS? Good to see you. <laughs> hey, LA. I don't know. LA. And then LW. That's pretty good. Nice. All right. Well, well thank you all for joining us on the special, special holiday edition. We're going to have to figure out which title we're going along with this time because it's been so good. We got so many in here. Um, but as always, we're the Usual Rejects. You can find us at usualrejects.com. You can get this podcast at usualrejects.com slash podcasts and also on you know Apple and Google and all that other good stuff. Have a wonderful holiday, however you celebrate that, and be safe out there. Thanks. 